Okay, so we are looking at uh, lateral directional mode approximations <coughs> right and uh, in the last class we looked at uh, the spiral mode approximation and we uh, uh, looking at the physics of the uh, motion of aircraft in spiral mode. We uh, said that uh, it is a, a slow change in uh, bank angle and uh, uh, so aircraft is uh, uh, having a, a predominantly a motion in uh, beta and r while the roll rate is is only giving the bank angle and bank angle is steadily changing. So we uh, came down to this uh, this equation right in delta r <coughs> delta r is the perturbation in the yaw rate the eigen value of for this linearized equation is the one corresponding to this spiral mode and this is this is an approximate uh, formula Right. This we uh, arrived at yesterday. So for the spiral mode of motion to be stable, this eigenvalue must be lying in the left half plane. Right? What it means is this should be less than zero. Right? For a stable aircraft in roll, this l beta is negative right we have talked about this For an aircraft having diagonal effect, no, which uh, is related to the stability in roll, CL beta is less than zero, right? And this L beta is no function of CL beta, right? So this is negative, right? So this quantity should be positive for this whole thing to become negative right. So for stability in this spiral mode of motion of aircraft L beta into N R minus L R into N beta must be positive right. Now it depends upon the relative magnitude of this term and this term right. Usually uh, so this aircraft uh, that we are talking about is having a stability in roll so this term is negative and R is negative okay. What is N R? N R is damping in yaw. 
when your aircraft is <coughs> yawing there is a contribution to the yawing moment coming from the vertical tail right which is trying to damp that yaw motion right and is usually negative. you understand what I am saying. So there is a force developed because of the yaw motion which is trying to oppose the motion right we are yawing and the force develops because of the yaw because the vertical tail is lying far away from the CG right that gives rise to a side force which tries to damp out the yawing motion and the, which is negative okay so this term is negative now lr is also coming because of the vertical tail right you identify uh, these terms you will find that uh, major contribution to this l beta is coming from the wing nr is coming from the vertical tail this lr is also uh, mainly coming from the vertical tail and n beta is also coming from vertical tail as yes, vertical tail is providing the directional stability so n beta is coming from the vertical tail right so there is only one term which is you know, coming from the this contribution is coming from the wing major contributions right. this lr is usually positive and beta is positive for an aircraft which is having directional stability now it depends upon the relative magnitude of you know, these numbers right. for your uh, airplane you can figure out if this is true or not if this is true then the spiral mode motion is stable right. The roll uh, mode can be approximated by the single degree of freedom motion in roll what uh, we have discussed already. So the equation can be this roll mode uh, can be assumed to be a single degree of freedom motion in roll right and this we have already discussed. So the equation for this corresponding to this particular mode is this where tau is the time constant So this uh, is what we already derived for the <coughs> constrained roll motion case which is quite a good approximation actually in this particular mode. And 
and this uh, damps out quite fast uh, say exponential uh, convergence uh, exponential decay of this delta p let us look at the, the last uh, one lateral directional motion of aircraft about the equilibrium point that we are talking about. The assumption here is that the motion is uh, uh, predominant in beta and r okay, side slip and yawing motion and roll is negligible which is uh, not really a very good assumption okay that is why you will probably uh, end up with a formula which will also have error. So in, if somebody wants to have a better estimate then you should also uh, incorporate the rolling uh, motion equation in this approximation. So remember this is only an approximation so we assume that the motion is uh, predominant in yaw and side slip. So we drop the rolling uh, motion equation and uh, what we get So this is after dropping the rolling motion of equation. Now solve for the eigenvalue of this matrix and you will get uh, the frequency and damping of the Dutch roll mode motion. So let us call this uh, a Dutch roll. solve this Right. This gives me a quadratic equation in lambda, lambda squared minus lambda uh, multiplied by y beta over u naught plus n r plus y beta over u naught into n r plus n beta. Right. 
So you can find out from here the natural frequency of motion in this particular mode. Damping <coughs> okay. So, the reason why we are deriving these expressions is that once we have these expressions in hand when we are designing the aircraft then I know which parameter I can play with right at the design stage itself. But uh, if the formula becomes complicated you know, then we will not know which parameter you, know, you can directly affect by changing some components of the aircraft right. For example here <coughs> this frequency is depending upon y beta n r n beta y r n beta right. So uh, most of these uh, <coughs> parameters you see is related to the vertical tail right y beta is the side force developed at the vertical tail is not it. This n beta is also uh, because of the vertical tail but depends no which way you place the vertical tail on, on the aircraft if it is a upside down no right now we are talking about conventional configuration when it's lying no vertically up if it is vertically down then this may give a different do you think this this may give a different n beta if it is vertically no it's upside down below the fuselage Okay, so this will not be affected, but the roll may get affected, right? Because uh, then you'll have uh, the aerodynamic center of the vertical tail lying below the CG, right? So uh, if we try to make any sense out of it, the uh, that is you know, which parameter you, know, you can actually play with at the design stage so that you get a better frequency in Dutch roll and a better damping right. If it is not well damped in Dutch roll the aircraft then it might <coughs> lead you to a motion which is called a wing rock okay. So damping if it becomes 0 then you have a, a self induced oscillation which is called wing rock. No, it is a limit cycle of oscillation. So let us try to now look at one example. No, we looked at uh, uh, this general aviation airplane in a uh, flying condition and uh, we found the eigenvalues right if you remember in the longitudinal case. So here also we will uh, do the same thing we take the same airplane <coughs> no, same flying condition and try to find out the values of these parameters okay using uh, numerical methods and also using approximate formula and see uh, uh, how well they match right. If they do not match then you know that uh, the approximate formula are not correct and you have to uh, look for you know, a better formula.
this example problem uh, I have taken from Nelson's book chapter 5. The flying condition is this. So you have flying crews at uh, this trim speed, angle of attack is 0 and uh, all other variables are 0, right. For general aviation airplane Navian, for which the data is given, no? you uh, uh, look at the back side of the book. You will find uh, data for a lot of aircraft, at least six uh, aircraft data in the low alpha range is given. Okay, so the data that is given is not going to change much because we are talking about uh, speeds which are low. Right? Only when speed is higher than or the Mach number is higher than 0.5 that we start worrying about the uh, compressibility effect, right. Otherwise the data that is given is valid uh, up to 0.5 Mach number, right. And uh, it is in the pre-stall region. So you can assume that data to be fairly constant uh, for, for the speed uh, below. Uh, mark 0.5 and alpha let us say below uh, 10 degrees. Now solve for the eigenvalues of this matrix. This will result in a characteristic equation which is quartic in lambda. Remember this is at this trim, now with trim 
this matrix will change right we have evaluated uh, this mat, uh, matrix at this particular time condition it's going to change with them so right now uh, what we are trying to compare is the eigen values of the exact uh, solution with uh, this alpha naught equal to 0 right as it as you go on increasing alpha naught the approximation is going to get worse right so you have to keep that in mind so this is right now at this alpha naught equal to 0 condition so i'll write here exact uh, values for different uh, modes and approximate values the exact one is uh, what you get by solving this okay this gives you exact Eigen values. So lambda spiral is uh, no, we have understood that the spiral mode eigen value is lying close to the imaginary axis right. So uh, look at this number it is very close to the imaginary axis right, almost at the origin and look at this number no, 0.144 so there is a huge difference in the two numbers so formula for this spiral mode eigen value approximate formula is not uh, correct right that's what we can conclude from here the role mode approximation is fairly good Okay, so uh, Dutch roll mode eigen value is the exact eigen value is this you know, minus 0.487 plus minus the imaginary part 2.335 and approximate value is minus 0 0.51 plus minus you know, 2.109 imaginary part. <coughs> so here also uh, there is a difference, right? So there is uh, some error involved in you know, making an assumption for this Dutch roll mode motion and uh, indeed uh, no we said that there will not be any roll motion in this particular motion which is uh, not really true okay. But uh, if you include that then you have to solve a cubic equation in lambda right the problem would be you will be able to solve a cubic equation right no, even by hand but the problem would be you will uh, see lot of other parameters coming into your expressions for 
frequency and the damping right and then that will not make much sense to a designer we want a simpler uh, relation so that we can directly see the physics uh, behind the effect of the components on these eigenvalues. This formula actually gets worse with increasing angle of attack. Is this clear? Remember when you started talking about uh, stability, we were first talking about static stability, right? And there we were talking about terms CL beta and CN beta, right? You remember we. Uh, uh, talked about different cases when we can get uh, more negative CL beta right and uh, more positive CN beta. So uh, that was based on the design of the wing or orientation of the wing with respect to flow and uh, location of the wing whether it is dihedral or anhedral right all that played a role in uh, the roll stiffness of the aircraft and uh, CN beta was depending upon the vertical tail sizing. So now you would want to go back and see how these eigenvalues you know, move in complex plane when you change CL beta or CN beta. So root locus is one technique. which is for tracking the roots or the eigenvalues with respect to a parameter. So first look at uh, we assume that CN beta is large and uh, now we start wearing CL beta okay and see how the uh, lateral directional mode eigenvalues are moving in the complex plane. So this is for an aircraft which is having directional stiffness, uh, directional stability. CN beta is positive and let us look at the effect of Okay, so these are my four eigenvalues and this is for CL beta equal to 0 case. Now you start changing CL beta towards a negative side. What do you see here? You see that the Dutch roll mode eigenvalues are moving towards the imaginary axis 
and what does it mean? It has lesser and lesser stability. Right? The aircraft is having lesser and lesser stability in roll, uh, Dutch roll, right? So these more eigenvalues are uh, Dutch roll eigenvalues. In the other direction, moves. like this when you are making CL beta <coughs> positive right. So the aircraft uh, which uh, is more stable statically stable in roll that is what CL beta less than 0 means right is uh, making the aircraft dynamically unstable right is is uh, uh, making the dutch roll mode unstable right not really unstable but uh, lesser stability in dutch roll right Let's look at what happens to this. We really don't real, uh, don't worry much about the spiral mode eigenvalue or spiral motion, which is long. Uh, no, the motion is taking so long time that uh, you don't worry about that. You can control it uh, uh, by using some control effort in flight. This. Uh, moves in this direction when CL beta is greater than 0 and in the other direction when <coughs> remember you cannot uh, uh, just change one parameter. CL beta if you are changing uh, then you have to change lot of other parameters in the aircraft equation because this CL beta is coming from some uh, component right and that component is also having uh, an effect on other derivatives right. So if you are changing this alone and you want to plot the root locus that is not going to uh, be sufficient you also have to see how other derivatives are changing. Uh, that and the effects of those derivatives on the eigenvalues is also important right. So this is one single case when only CL beta is changing CN beta is fixed at some positive value so one, once it the two uh, eigenvalues joined together at this real <coughs> axis they split like this there is uh, an effect on the roll mode eigenvalue also so going to be moving towards left becoming more stable when CL beta is less than 0 when CL beta is greater than 0 then it is going to move towards the imaginary axis right. So this is a uh, this gives some idea uh, to the aircraft designer uh, how you are going to place your wing uh, what should be the size of the size of the wing will be decided by uh, uh, performance parameters right not uh, <coughs> really by the stability if you need uh, extra stability then you have to augment the stability using uh, stability augmentation system right that is a control system which 
provides uh, artificial stability to the aircraft. Lateral directional mode let us look at the effect of C n beta now. Clearly this C n beta is coming from the vertical tail the major contribution is coming from the vertical tail C l beta is the major contribution is coming from the wing. So these two are two different components which you can uh, design separately right. So it makes sense to uh, talk about them separately and see the effect of them on the but still the motion is coupled roll and yaw motions are always coupled. So whatever uh, is uh, happening here is going to have an effect also on the no, if the effect uh, on the roll motion is also going to be uh, seen in the yaw motion right. So there is some CL beta negative for which the spiral mode eigenvalue is here right. So <laughs> remember in this case the CL beta was 0 at this point so it is lying on the uh, right hand plane here uh, CL beta is so there is some stability in role. So the spiral mode the eigenvalue is lying uh, to the left of the imaginary axis. When you start so this is for the case when C n beta is 0 and you start changing now C n beta. You increase the stiffness in yaw and you get higher frequencies right because if you remember uh, uh, the first constraint second constraint motion that we talked about was uh, yaw motion where we found that the frequency depends upon the n beta term which is proportional to the C n beta right if the velocity is constant then that uh, n beta depends on C n beta. So this is how the Dutch roll mode eigenvalues move when you start uh, no, decreasing C n beta making it negative and starts moving like this. Remember this is for a typical no, uh, the general aviation airplane that we are talking about not may not be true for all aircraft right for all aircraft the only truth is the equations of motion right trim conditions and uh, uh, such uh, root locus plots are going to be different for different 
of types of aircraft. There is no not really any change in the roll mode eigenvalue. with respect to sand beta. The spiral mode eigenvalue move to the moves to the left when C n beta starts decreasing becoming negative and this direction when C n beta is increasing in the positive direction right. So such plots actually helps you to uh, to size the uh, appropriate components on the aircraft is this clear? So we can uh, just summarize what uh, we did today. So if we uh, found a approximate formula for the spiral mode eigenvalue, touch roll mode eigenvalues, and uh, roll mode eigenvalues, and uh, we also compared the exact values with the approximate values and we found that uh, uh, there there was error right in the Dutch roll mode uh, eigenvalue and the spiral mode eigenvalue is mainly because uh, we are not uh, considering the roll you know, in the approximation right. So uh, if you include also the roll dynamics you will get an improved formula but that formula will depend upon lot of lot many more parameters no then it will be uh, difficult to uh, understand which one is playing what role okay so we'll uh, uh, stop at this